Hey, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. I'm back. I'm loving it. It's Monday. It's a crazy busy Monday, but I love it. Just for all of you out there that think I'm complaining about my job. I'm never complaining. Love it, love it, love it. Jack and I are out here solo today. We're just kind of buttoning up some loose ends. We got a pathway done. Can't wait to show you that. We're going to fire up this waterfall today if the rain and schedules allow. If not today, 100% tomorrow. So I'm going to fire up one of the waterfalls, give you a sneak peek of what this project looks like finished. We've got some great stuff going on with Chris. He's got some low edges that he He's going to show you guys how to fix and why leaving some extra liner is just so 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 important the retail store always has stuff going on this weekend they're doing i believe it's a golden retriever rescue thing so there should be a hundred golden retrievers running around aquascape jumping in the water playing in the ponds just kind of trying to support that kind of stuff and get friends and family out to the place so busy week can't wait to show you this waterfall more importantly i can't wait to see the customer's reaction my favorite part all right guys hang on tight we're gonna have a good one this week. See you soon. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. pretty bad so we just got it tarp back's gonna get over there we gotta close up our gates got this tarp tomorrow we're gonna start digging that rec pond part so we got to lay everything out figure out where our decks are gonna go get some string lines up we got some formal edges that have to square off the house right now we're protected i told you i'd show you some of these pathways i want to do it before it gets too muddy but we got a couple more steps put in today these are going to lead up to the rec pond part that sits over there jack and the guys got this pathway done love this big rock intercepting the pathway just love it love it love it love it we're moving right along we're out of this project in nine more days. So follow along because it's getting real. It rained a lot yesterday. In fact, like I don't think it stopped until like around 2 a.m. So you can see how cloudy that water gets. That's pretty common, especially after rain. And there's no mulch or anything down. So I expected it to be worse, but it's not that bad. We're going to try to make the best of it. I mean, everybody's already got mud sticking to their shoes all over the place. So we're going to come in and get this tarp out of here, see how dry it is underneath and start digging out that wetland pond right around lunchtime. It they should be back home and we're gonna see their reaction to this waterfall running just one of the waterfalls and I want to share that with you I promised you guys I'd show you that waterfall so I can't wait to show you that get a quick little interview with Harry and his wife Elena and see what they think of it because I think it's stunning so hopefully tears of joy <laughs> We're up here just kind of finishing up the edges of this upper pool area here. Now we have two 90Ls feeding that. And that doesn't mean much to anybody else. So we'll break it down to gallons per hour. It's going to be a little bit more than 15,000 gallons of water per hour. The hard thing for us to know, or really anybody else to understand, is how high will that back up over the top of this? And based off of experience, we're thinking like an inch and a half to like two inches of water. But we want our edges, especially on an upper pool like this, to be a good six, seven inches higher than water level. So if you throw that level on here and we use like a zip level or we use a transit or something. If Jack comes up over here and looks at our lowest part of our edges, which is this part right here, and he throws that on there, we'll see coming across, we've got a good, what is that? Probably six inches, right? We could measure that, but we're gonna wanna get it up even a little higher because as water pools up probably an inch higher than this point, now we're closer to five inches. The reason we want our edges so high over here is because we built a lot of this up. And what happens on these areas that build up, no matter how much we compact the space, it's gonna settle. The other thing we like to do is leave a lot of extra liner. So you can see how we haven't cut this yet. So Jack's going to take that liner, fold it, bring it all the way up to the back side of this rock here. And then instead of trimming it right here to this level, he's going to take that excess liner, just fold it down. So he's going to bring that soil all the way up to here. He's going to get that liner almost to the top of that rock, which is going to put us eight to 10 inches higher than water level, which will be really good. And then instead of trimming off this excess, he'll leave that stuff there, bury this. And if we ever need to come back and raise the liner up a little bit, then we have this excess, right? Yep. Instead of us saying it, why don't we go over to Chris Hansen? It's a good thing you're teaching our viewers out there about getting the liner appropriately high enough behind the rocks to hold all of the water inside of the water feature. I got a call yesterday from one of our customers that we built a water feature for back in early of 2022, about 10 minutes from our shop. And he says only as of recently has he started to have to fill this water feature more frequently than he historically has in the past. Guys and girls out there, we're gonna lose water 
to evaporation and every pond is gonna be a little bit different at the rate you're gonna have to refill this thing. But this customer had started to have to refill this feature once a week and it wasn't anything catastrophic, but it was still more frequently than normal. So he called us out here and I wanna show you guys again how important it is to get the liner outside of those rocks and get those edges super high folks, not just an inch above water, but anywhere from four to six inches above water and make these things bomb proof and hassle free for your customers and worry free for you in the long run. So unfortunately, when we were here a year and a half ago, didn't quite do this, this edge exactly the way that I wanted it. It's got a low point in the rock, but you can see how close that water is to the liner. And it's actually jumping the liner up in this top spot and through here. So the water level right there is about three inches above the liner here. Now I was hoping that I created enough of a, a weep area down and through here because I didn't quite have a big enough rock to kind of set in this area here. And I was afraid of making it look too bouldery. So what I'm gonna do is peel this back, get this liner up high, but also leave a relief area. So any water that does get past my foam will stay inside the liner and back into this cooling area down here, making it so that the water will actually stay inside the liner. So just keep that in mind, guys and girls, when you're doing your edge treatments, get that liner up nice and high behind these rocks and avoid this problem in the future. One thing I also wanted to point out is you can see this is where that area was. What will happen is because this is all foamed up and the liner is lower down here than it is above water level, sometimes what will happen is it's going to be a challenge for me to get that liner up, hug the back side of this rock. So what I'm going to do is rather than try and pull this liner up and have it actually roll over the top of this, which is less than ideal, I like that liner to always come vertically up the sides of the rocks like you can see here. I'll get it up a little bit higher, but what I'm gonna do is just open this area up and you can see how water is now escaping down through here just by giving it a little bit of a relief area. So this is gonna be one of those areas that we talk about weep holes, right? Or relief areas when we're building out in the field, when we know liner is going to be close and water is going to be high up on these rocks. I'm still gonna pull this up part a little bit. I'm gonna open this up. What I'll probably do is pull this liner back and chase a couple pieces of one inch pipe back in through here. So it's not big diameter pipe, but I'll do a couple of them. Make sure that those stay free of debris. And then I'll cover this whole open area between the liner and the rocks where you can see that water flowing. I'm gonna open this up a little bit more and create a controlled leak in through here by creating a relief for that water to, to escape. I'm also gonna redo this edge. You can see how it's kind of pooling back down in here. This fold should actually be folded this way and gone up on the high side. So a couple things got done wrong when we were out here. Didn't realize it at the time, but thank God we did. But more importantly, thank God we have the opportunity to show you out there. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, I'm gonna get this thing buttoned up and fixed and stay tuned. So got everything laid out. We had to make some serious changes in the design. And I mean serious. And it's all because of that guy right there. Say hi to the other Chris. <laughs> he didn't screw up at all. He actually inspired a completely new design. Originally, this waterfall had a swim pond coming right up to here with a big cascade coming down over it and then swim pond coming from here all the way back to that wall with a long deck going over the top of it. That man said, why are you putting it here? Don't you think you should put it over here and have it come off this waterfall instead? So originally, Chris, I wanted to be like, shut up. I don't know what you're talking about. Like I've been doing this my entire life. You just started a couple years ago. You're gonna change designs. And then I started losing sleep over it. So at night I was like, oh my gosh, like we could actually move it over there. We can make the swim pond a little bit bigger. We have more space, more creative freedom. So we've changed everything. So we've got everything kind of strung up over here. We still have some formal pieces integrated into the designs. So we have to move the deck. We have to move some stepping stones. We are going to get a little bit bigger swim pond or plunge pool. Let's call it a plunge pool. Because by the time we're done with rock work and everything else, it's going to feel like one of these little kind of cavernous pools that you might just kind of jump down into five feet of water. It's going to be tricky, but it's going to be fun. So I'll flip this around and show you kind of the new layout and see if this makes any sense to you guys. I'm looking at it and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I also can kind of picture it. You don't know what the heck I'm talking about, but we'll try anyway. Here we go. Hi everyone, it's Karine here at Aquascape Pond Shop. You guys have seen, I'm sure you have, construction and maintenance has been so busy. Well, here at the pond shop we are too. We're doing an awesome event with As Good As Gold. It's a golden retriever pet adoption day. We're so excited to do this. We're partnering up with them. You know, there's gonna be a meet and greet. It's gonna be so exciting. As of right now, we are heading out, Mary and I, behind the camera. She and I are gonna head out to go get some more supplies for this event. We look forward to seeing you guys and thank you.
super, super special moment. I'm literally like a four-year-old at Christmas right now. Like, I'm pretty excited. I've actually took a sneak peek at this, but nobody else has seen it except for that guy over there. But I told you we'd get their reaction. Maybe this isn't a good thing. Like, what if it? What if they're like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so let's fire this up. We'll get this turned on and we'll see what they say. We're gonna do one pump and then we'll do the second pump. by the kitchen window and you're like, oh. wow, there's a whole waterfall oh. on the other side. You don't see it unless you're inside. Oh my God. Oh, is that great? <laughs> Oh my gosh, isn't that awesome? Yeah. Wow. How about every time you do dishes or make Brian coffee? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just love it. Well, we got it running. We forgot to do the interview because I've just been sitting here hanging out with the customers and they're just talking about how much they love it and the energy and all the different vantage points and how beautiful it looks. I'm going to start by just showing you my favorite point and then I really want to take you back and show you kind of wrap up that whole Secret Falls thing with you guys, show you how cool that looks. So this is by far my favorite view. There's that little fall that comes in over there. We got the big rock here. It runs again so much different with rain rock after we have water come over it's that aggressive. Lots of water I'm gonna be there. You got the little secret fall up on top right here. We can get you in a little closer there in a second. And then everything just kind of cools up on the side. Of it. start of the swim pond like oh my god <laughs> all right so if we can remember here's where that pipe is right underneath this rock so this is actually helping regulate the flow so you can see right now if i take that off come back over here you can see how aggressive that water comes out over the top if i come back over here put this rock back on top you can actually see it vortexing as it kind of goes down and through there if i put this back over the top it really restricts the flow and come back down over here and then we get that little weepy fall coming right out over that super easy trick just that pipe back behind the rock, back build and sealed. You can see my liner is considerably higher back behind it all. And then I can get a waterfall a little higher than the one I'm standing on. All right, you guys have to check out the difference in the flow on the bottom waterfall here and how well this thing is working. So these are absolutely my favorite type of falls. Just kind of twisting and turning. It like wraps around this rock, wraps around that rock, comes back on a big angle. It's got an incredible sound. I love how the water here just barely wants to come over. I think with that extra pump, 100% that's gonna fall over, but you know birds are just gonna go crazy on that little spot right there. And then look at how it just is ripping against our formal edge patio here. Coming right up to there, still have that bowl as the entrance, and then everything is working to just fall right into our apple blocks down in here. So we've got this area kind of put back together. I took a couple cobbles out of that upper pool and kind of put them in here just to help hold back some of this dirt that's in here. But I laid two pieces of one inch flex pipe back in between the liner and this rock. So actually inside the liner, that'll keep relief open all the way down to here. Before I cover this up, I just wanted to show you there's one and two of those pipes. So there is a little some void space down below the pipes the water's escaping. But in the event that that ever has dirt, sediment, and debris, and you can see there's, there's plants that coming through, that's just gonna keep a 
channel open inside the liner back behind this rock to allow water to go from up there down into here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some more of this big gravel and just fill this area in through here. But I don't wanna pack it with that little gravel and really condensing the amount of open space. I want that water to be able to flow freely, which is why I'm using the big gravel versus the small gravel. I hope that makes sense. And again, this is why it's so important for you guys and girls to see these little mistakes or these leaks happen in real time and then how we're actually fixing them. So I hope that all makes sense. It does happen. Even us pros still make mistakes occasionally, but this is an excellent opportunity to help teach you guys how to avoid that, but also inevitably the fix for these challenges that you guys are going to encounter in the field. So until next time, we'll see all you guys later. Bye. So we made it. We're out here just outside Branson, Missouri in where, where are we actually at, Jack? The Ozarks. We're in the Ozarks. Table Rock Lake is right out over there. It was raining all morning, so we couldn't come out here and get you a video, but so just to give you guys an idea, this is going to be the finished grade out here on this patio. So this is going to come out flat like that. You can already see how much it starts dropping off, dropping off. But all of this has got to get built up. Then we follow, just follow the lines of the house. That's five feet right there. Then we come up over here. There's another nine feet before we get back up over in there. And we're not finishing here. We're finishing all the way down in here. So that's the 17 feet we have to make up over a very short distance. Our waterfall is not starting all the way back there. It's starting more in line with the corner of this house. So when I look at it from here, you see where Jack's at. Here's the corner of the house. He's right there. So pushing up six, seven feet up over there. We're way up over here. And that's the first fall where we start coming down over. So all of this has got to get built up, which is just crazy to even try to visualize. But that's what we do. So we'll get this all taken care of. Jack will get you some drone footage and then we'll start sketching this up. a whirlwind right yeah, like <laughs> in and out we usually have a little more time than this <laughs> now we're like just making our flight I mean, we're filming at the airport because we didn't have time to film anywhere else we were trying to do it in the car and then we realized it was a little dangerous so we figured we'd find a quiet little corner here and just kind of sum everything up we got up at 6 a.m and finished up the drawing and tightened things up and then we got to brad's house at like quarter eight it took about 10 minutes he's like yep <laughs> this is what i want so usually on these travel projects there's kind of like a dinner and like a little presentation and talk to you it was like we got like 10 minutes it's Brad, like so are we, we good? Or not? He's like, are we in budget? We're like, yep, we're in budget. So we're coming back. Unfortunately, we came out here for one reason. We came out here to look at doing a huge waterfall at the lake house. We're not doing that this year. There's no way we're gonna have time. Nate, the landscaper, needs a whole lot more time to get all of the prep work done, the retaining walls in. And if we try to do our stuff, we're gonna kill all of his access. Not kill it, like yeah, no, kill it. It's impossible. probably the best. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be, be able to do what he's got. Physically to do. impossible. So we've got a probably we have a hundred percent guarantee we're probably gonna be back out here. In the spring. I'm so nervous about coming out here in the spring. I know what spring you know, is like the in with Jersey. Weather. Yeah, it's just weather. Weather is crazy too. So it's the busiest time of year for us and for you. And the weather is so iffy. Like we can come out here, it could be five straight days of rain. So it could, we don't, we it don't could be 70 degrees. Like you just don't know. I'm guessing we're going to get everything. Either way, we're going to do it in the spring. I'm hoping we're back out here sometime early April and we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Hey, Jack, another one in the books. Yeah, buddy. All right. See ya. Well, I told you it'd be a crazy week and it sure was. From Missouri to Edges to Golden Retrievers, right? Like, and how about the waterfalls? I've been out here a long time. I know you guys have been following us for a long time. Big shout out to all of you guys that have been following the process of this project. We're almost done. We are so close to being finished. So next week out here, we're gonna continue to be out here. Chris is going out with Tana Serpa from Serpa Designs. They're going out there to build him a pretty epic pond. If you guys haven't been following Tanner, make sure you follow Tana Serpa Designs. Super cool guy. In fact, he's so in inspirational. Trevor from our tech department has been so inspired. He's going to come in and redo a bunch of our patio bowls. And if you guys have ever seen Trevor's work, you know it's going to be incredible. What else do we have going on next week? Oh, oh my gosh. Prep for Pondemonium. You guys don't know what Pondemonium is? Check out the link below. It is a huge, huge event. In fact, it's our single biggest event every single year. We do this once a year. This year's online so everybody can come, whether you live in Alaska or Rhode Island or California or Australia or Japan or Hungary. I don't care where you live. Make sure you check out Pondemonium. So that's a wrap. You guys know what to do. Like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. You guys, we need to move those subscriptions up, 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 up. So tell all your friends, tell your children, tell your grandparents, tell your neighbors. Check out Team Aquascapes, and we'll see you next week. Bye.